Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Stop, stop, stop. Who? 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 Hey there, what's up? Uh, so I found out how to do some cool things, and now we have animals up in this jungle. So that's cool. Also, check it out. Running water. We got some rapids coming up ahead, so let's cut straight to the chase. We're gonna we're gonna do some warm ups, open string blues, D major scale, and a bow exercise. Open string blues. Why are there so many jaguars around? <sighs> oh, look at Taco. Jaguars are distracting. Down, kitty. Up, kitty. 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 Got a lot of cats. Let's give it a shot. Here you go. Down kitty, up kitty, down kitty, up kitty, open A string kitty. You got it. One, two, here we go.
This is called a key signature. So far, every time we've ran across an F or a C, they're always C sharps. And they always put that little sharp sign right in front of it. No, Billy, it's not a hashtag. But now the book is like, all right, guys, come on. You see there's a pattern here, right? Shortcut, the key signature. At the beginning of a song, if it's in the key of D, so there's always F sharps and C sharps, and it's like, let's put it at the beginning and look at it once and now you know. And it's gonna stay that way until they either switch it out with a different key signature or they put a natural sign in front of the note. I know it seems like we're doing a mean thing here, taking away those sharp signs to remind you of your F sharps and C sharps, but uh, you know what? It's, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's just this is the way the world works. Let's run through number 45. It's a little bit more different from the other ones than number 44 is. 44 is, I, I think it's easier. That's why it's a little bit less points. That's, that's all. Before we even clap it, let's just look at it. Open D, second finger, F sharp. We know it's an F sharp because of that key signature. Does a bunch of quarter notes in a row and then a rest. And then it's kind of the same thing, ba -da -da -da. but it's up higher, so you're using the higher fingers. Ba -da -da. Then, oh, there's that bracket underneath the whole thing. That bracket underneath the whole thing, I haven't talked about it in a video yet because it's not a real music marking. It's something they only put in this book to help you out a little bit. And it means that whatever finger you have down, you're gonna keep that finger down while you play the other string underneath it. Some people call that tunneling. Cause like the string is going through a tunnel underneath your finger. That might even be what this book calls it. I didn't, but maybe. Whoever can point out where they talk about what that big thing at the bottom means, you get two trinkets. Because I don't... I mean, I know what it is because I learned about it a long time ago, but I don't think they talk about it in this book, so how are you supposed to know that? Weird. Anyway. So we can really easily break this one down into four chunks. Each chunk is always the same pattern just a little bit higher up each time. So let's clap it. Let's just pick one of those chunks. 
to practice in this video. The other three you gotta practice on your own. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I pick that one. F sharp, A, F sharp, A, G, A, B. Guess what? I picked this one because it's the hardest one. You've got a lot of the string changes going back and forth. I knew how that eeny, miny, mo is going to work out because I wrote it ahead of time. It's like those reality TV shows that mom and dad watch. They're all just written. Say the notes as you move the finger that's supposed to be down as if you have like a ghost violin. Kind of like that ghost leopard. You know, I spent two hours trying to get that leopard to not be a ghost leopard. And then I decided, whatever, let's write them into the script. Also, probably the kind of things they do on those reality shows that your parents watch. F sharp, A, F sharp, A, G, A, B. Don't get confused, violins. This is a viola. Sing it! F sharp, A, F sharp, A, G, A, B. Sing the finger numbers. Two, open, two, open, three, open, one. Pizzicato! And go ahead and try it with the bow, whatever. If your bow made no sound at all, you need more rosin on it. If it made kind of a weak sound, you need more rosin on it. If it made kind of a scratchy sound, oh no, you've put too much rosin on it. You can just kind of shake it off and, you know, Maybe you can use like a cleaning cloth to kind of hit the hairs a little bit and knock some of it. If it's like puffing off, like, yeah, you got too much rosin. Just clean it off a little bit. I don't know. Once you put it all together, it should sound like this. Not like that. One of the things that has been holding you guys back in your score is keeping a steady beat. The metronome thing. Let's say I'm playing a song like Twinkle Little Star. Check out my left hand. It's just gonna keep going. I gotta make sure the melody matches that left hand, right? doesn't, that happens, and it doesn't sound right. If you don't play it in time, it's not going to sound right. And it could even make it so that the rhythm becomes almost impossible to tell that you're even playing the right rhythm. So your tempo can affect your rhythm score as well. And that's really holding some of you guys back. So to help that out, practice with a metronome. 
Shepherd's Hay is a sixth grade song. It's posted down below anyway because it's got good tips for you for figuring out how to make a metronome work. So check that thing out. Uh, use what you learned there in, in, your, in your practicing here for this. Which is a good segue to sixth grade because violins, one of your rapid choices is Shepherd's Hay, which is down below that one that I was just telling fifth grade about with the metronome and stuff. One of the things you'll notice here in sixth grade now is we got two different things to do if you're a violin player or a cello player or a viola player. You only have two options in this one, the lower, easier one and the, the harder one that really still isn't too hard to do. Do the harder one, get a higher score. It'll be awesome. So the tricky part for you cellos and violas is gonna be getting a slow, long bow for those whole notes. One, two, three, four. While I'm here with this cello, this is the first time all year I've pulled out a cello bow. Cellos, your bow hold is a lot like the, what we've been doing with those smaller violin ones, but you're gonna take a little bit more of the bow. Your fingers should actually kind of flop over past the frog a little bit. It's up to your first finger here on your bow to keep the right amount of pressure to not let the bow bounce out of control as we slow down. Bouncy bow. Smooth bow. But you can't go too slow because then you run out of sound. Too slow, too much pressure. But if we lighten up on both of those aspects, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, your goal's got to be to make those notes as smooth as possible. The notes ought to be pretty easy for you. It's just the same thing that we've done on the other three strings, except now it's on the C string. So open one, two, three. If you're a viola, open one, three, four. If you're a cello. Violins, your top string now, your E string, you're not like the low strings you get that low two finger position for your new string. Shepherd's Hay is all about the high E string. Big Rock Candy Mountain is all about the high E string. So violas and cellos, you can play those two too if you want, but there's nothing new for you in there, so you're not gonna get graded on there. Like, you only get graded on your new things, like the, uh, the C string that we haven't played yet until now for this rapid. Cool? We're gonna wrap this video up here. There's two videos below that you should check out that's gonna help you with everything here. I've mentioned them a couple times throughout this video, but the scales video, scroll down, watch some of those. There's some good stuff about scales in there. And then the playing with a metronome, Shepherd's Hay, fifth grade, Listen to it so you know what to do with a metronome. Sixth grade, listen to it because it's part of your uh, curriculum this year uh, to do it. Good luck making your way down these scales. The less information I'm putting in these videos just means the more questions I'm expecting from you in class. So whether that's 
online class or in real person class. So you know what you gotta do from this video. If you need help, that's what our uh, class is for. Uh, and then we'll help you out there. Uh, good luck at your rapids. We'll see you at the other side. Bye. Rub it, rub it, rub it.